Hey guys and welcome back to your girl Brittany. Thank you so much for hanging out today. I have a new tutorial for you and this is a rendition of that milk carton with drawers box that I had did, the handmade version of it. I just manipulated it a little bit so that the drawers will come out from the front the long way instead of the short way and I was totally inspired by the new garden party collection and I finally broke the seal on that and decided to create with it and you know how one of the big things with Maggie Holmes is the houses that she has in her collection so that is why I had did this so it is a little house and um, so if you remember, I will have the video linked down below if you're interested in the milk carton with drawers that I did. But remember how like in the front part, the drawers came out. So I just changed it up so it'll come out on the side so it will look more like a house. I even have a chimney. I had grabbed some of my stuffing and I had to emulate uh, smoke coming out. And then um, this whole thing, this is a small, much shrunken down, smaller version of the box. This measures to be about uh, four and an eighth wide and two and an eighth deep. And the height of it, oops, comes out to be roughly almost five and a half inches. So it is perfect way to send cute, quick little happy mail, just I'm thinking of you type deal. It is um, one inch deep drawers, one inch height for the drawers. And so um, still has three drawers and these are two by four. And like I said, one inch in height so you can fit cute little um, trinkets and fun little happy mail inside there and another thing I did differently with this one which is optional for you and that will be explained in the video is that I do have a little part up here for a compartment to add more goodies I did not do that in my original one um, but you can if you don't want to do that you can just go ahead and adhere it down as usual but otherwise you can go ahead and have an additional compartment to add goodies or candy or whatever and so of course I use the garden party collection to decorate it and I just absolutely love how this turned out, guys. So if you are interested in how this all comes together, make sure you stay tuned. All right, so starting out, you'll need three pieces for your drawer that measure four by six. Then you'll need three pieces that measure six and one eighth by five and a quarter, and these will be your sleeve. You need a piece for your roof that is four and one eighth by six and one eighth. And then you also need two other pieces, one measuring six and three quarters by two and one eighth, and then five and a half and two and one eighth. Don't worry guys, all of this will be down below in the description box for you. So starting off with the four by six, we're gonna start some scoring, and you are going to score at one inch on all four sides, and you're going to do that to all three of your pieces that are your drawer. Then you're gonna grab your four, or your six and one eighth by five and a quarter, and on the six and one eighth side, we're gonna score at one, rotate it, and then score it at one, and then rotate it to the five side and score it at two and one eighth and three and one eighth. And you're gonna apply that to all three. Next, you're gonna take our piece that is six and three quarters by two and one eighth, and you're gonna score it at half an inch and then three and a half. And then for that other piece, we're gonna score it at three. Now for this other piece, we're going to score it at two and four and one eighth. And then we are going to rotate it to the four and one eighth side. And we are going to make a mark at two and one sixteenth. Now if you don't have a sixteenth on your scoreboard, you can just kind of lightly fold your paper in half to create your mark. And starting with your four by six pieces that we scored at one inch on all four sides, we're gonna go ahead and varnish those score lines and we are going to form our boxes by making sure we cut up, up to the score lines on those corner pieces and forming the box.
Now we're going to take the sleeves and we are going to cut up the score. We're going to varnish our score lines and then we're going to cut up to the score line of those little squares in the middle there and we're going to adhere those pieces to the flaps. Now the boxes and sleeves are complete, we're going to adhere them on top of one another. So take your adhesive of choice and go ahead and put them together. Now we're going to take our ruler and work on our roof. Now the part that we had did that mark at that 2 and 1 16th, we're going to take our ruler and we're going to line it up with the corner and we're going to take our scoring tool and go from the mark in that middle all the way to the corner and then we're going to shift our ruler to the right and create another score line and this is going to create our flap and I'm just going to repeat it on the, up, on the other side and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. Now we're going to cut those remaining pieces off. So starting for that that front score line, we're going to go ahead and cut those pieces off on all the sides. And then after that, we're going to fold the flaps and varnish. So now we're going to grab the base of our house and we're going to adhere this to the top there. So again, grab your adhesive of choice and adhere it to the top. Now we're going to take that piece that measures six and three quarters by two and one eighth, the one where we scored at the half inch and at three and a half. We're going to take that and we're going to varnish it and then we're going to line it up accordingly. So we're going to start it off from the roof and if there's extra, that's perfectly fine because you can just go ahead and snip it off. I'd rather have more than not enough. And now I'm just going to add glue to the one side of the roof and adhere it down. And then you're going to adhere it to the other part of the roof and then we're going to adhere the base portion to the three drawers that we created. And then if you have any overhang, go ahead and just snip that right off. Now we're going to take the other piece that we scored at three and we're going to adhere it to the other side. Now this part is optional. If you want to create a little compartment at the top, you can go ahead and add a Velcro dot there and not worry about adhering it down. 
and just make sure that you glue down your base portion but otherwise if you're not going to use it as a compartment go ahead and adhere it to the top flap and to the roof part so then that way it is just the roof and not an additional compartment for storing goodies. next part of course this is my actual voice and not a voiceover um it's a little bit <laughs> complicated ish not really but this is like the i'm not sure what the you know the steeple chimney part that actually comes out out of the house um for like when you have the fireplace um this is optional but i want to to show you how to do it but if you are going to adhere it to your house you want to make sure that everything that your papers that you're using are matted to your house before adding it on and like I suggest making a template so in that case if you want to use your regular card like your decorative card stock you can go ahead and to do your um, little chimney you have a um, template for you so you don't have to worry about making any mistakes so this took me a very long time I don't know why <laughs> to figure out these measurements okay so you're gonna need a piece of cardstock that measures two and a quarter by two and then on the two and a quarter side you're gonna score at half an inch one inch one and a half and at two then we're going to rotate it to the two inch side. We are going to score at, oops, we're going to score at one and a half. And then now we're going to be making some weird little kind of marks going on here. Um, so on the, you see this score line here? You see how there's this quarter inch score line and then we have our half inch scores. So we're going to make a score at the one inch mark to the very first score line. Okay. And then we are going to make another score mark or actually we won't need to because we already have it there. We're going to make another score mark at one inch and in our last panel okay so looking at it so here's our half inch half 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 quarter looking at it from the two inch side we scored at one and a half and then we score here at one just up to that first score line so the first panel and then we score at one inch again but on the last panel so that is what your score marks should look like. So then the cutting part to it, so that's what I'm saying, it's good to um, utilize, like make one and have it be your template in case you make a mistake or anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut up so we have, so here's that one and a half part right here. So we have this score line. So we have one, two, three, four. If we look at it from the quarter inch side, we're going to go from one, two. So the second score line, we're going to cut up to that first score line. Then we're going to cut over. 
and then we're going to cut over that score line. So like that. So again, we move from first score line to the second score line. We had cut up the score line, then we moved, then we cut diagonally to that one inch score mark that we made, and then we moved it over, turned the paper over, and then we cut it off. So then the next part, we're going to skip this little square here. So we're going to go to this next little score line here, and we are going to cut up. And then we are going to cut over to that score line that we made there. We're going to cut up there and just leave it right there for now. So now we're going to move to this last score line and we're going to cut all the little pieces that we just created. And then this last part, this last little square, we're going to cut that off. So this is what your template should look like here. So if you have to rewind the video quite a few times, go right ahead and do it. <laughs> um, that's why I wanted to make sure that I spoke live on this and not a voiceover so you had a good understanding of how that worked. And so um, again, like I said, I feel it'll be better to do a template because what you're going to do is you're gonna, now we're gonna go ahead and fold on those score lines and varnish those. So this is our piece that it's going to adhere. So I'm going to add my hot glue. I'm just going to fold that over and attach that. So now when you look at it like this, you have like a little, you have your two flaps. You have your shorter one up top, then you have this one at the bottom. I'm just going to fold that over. I'm going to add hot glue. And then I'm going to fold this flap on top of that. I, it doesn't cover the whole thing, that's fine. And I'm just going to do it like that. So then, when it adheres, it goes like this. So all you do is add your adhesive and then add it to whichever spot you want to add it to your house. So that is that. So that's why I said make a template. If you want to use your decorative cardstock instead of, you know, worrying about layers because this is these are half-inch panels, then make a template first, then cut from your template and go from there. To, it'll be a lot easier to, for you to do that. So, um, but there is the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, let me see your creations. Make sure you tag me in Instagram or you can even tag me here on YouTube as well. I would love to see you guys recreate it. But thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.